It's another interesting session on crunch econometrics. Today, I will take you through the basic steps of estimating and interpreting a vector error correction model. If you are a beginner or an intermediate user of econometric tools or any analytical software like eViews and Stata, I will encourage you to stay with my channel. Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users. Whenever you are my channel, try to load in your data and just follow my procedure. With that, you can now begin to gather some confidence on how you can analyze your data. Okay, basic steps to estimating a VKM. What are they? You can see them on the screen. Step one, make sure the series are stationary at first difference, definitely not at second difference. Step two, go ahead to determine the optimal lag length for the model. I call the optimal lag length in this case, lag length P. After that, perform Johansson co-integration test by imputing that lag length into the Johansson model. Step four, if after estimating Johansson and there is no co-integration, simply estimate the unrestricted VAR, or you can call it the basic VAR. But if there is co-integration, go ahead to specify the VECM. Now you are going to reduce the number of lags by one that you will use into the VECM model. After that, perform some diagnostic tests. In this video, because I really want to explain to you, I'm going to take steps one to three, then I'll conclude step four, five, six in the next video. Okay, this is the data we'll be using, PDI, PCE, and GDP. Let's start with step one, perform stationarity test. So I double click PDI, I go to view, I maneuver to unit root test, I select the level, I'm using AIC, so I change this to Akaka Info Criterion. Because I have a quarterly data, I can use up to four, eight lags, so I'll just use four. I click OK. So we have our results for the LPDI unit root test. You can see it up here. The null hypothesis is that this variable has a unit root. So how do we reject or not reject the null hypothesis? You have to look at the T statistic. If the absolute value of the Dikifula T statistic is higher than the critical values indicated here, then we will reject the null. But if that absolute value is not higher than the critical values indicated here, then we will fail to reject the null. So from what we are seeing here, the absolute value of the LPDI series is lower than the indicated critical values, even at the 10% level. So this one tells us that LPDI has a unit root. So how do we correct this? We go back to view. We click on unit root test. Now we choose first difference, we leave the maximum lags at 4, and we click OK. Now you can see even the prop value is so significant, even below 1% level. So now this is a stationary series at first difference. So we do the same thing for the second variable. I double click that, I go to view, click on unit to test, the button is at level, I change this to AIC, I reduce 11 lags to 4, and I click OK. So using the same argument that I told you earlier on, once the T statistics, that is the absolute value of the T statistics of the Dekifula test, if it's lower than the critical value here, then we cannot reject the null. And from what we are seeing, the absolute value is lower. So that means LPCE has a unit root. To correct that, we go back to view, unit root test, and now we select first difference and click OK. So looking at the absolute value at 3.2, clearly higher than 5% level, it's now a first difference stationary series. So we take the last variable, GDP, we do the same thing, view, unit root test, check the level button, I change the level back to 4, I click OK. So you can see it has a unit root. To correct that, view, unit root test. Now I change it to first difference. Nothing else is affected. I click OK. So clearly, it is now a first difference stationary series. So step one is done.
Step two, determine optimal lags for the model. To do that, I'm going to open all the variables as an unrestricted var and I highlight all. Then I right click and I select open as var. You can see all the variables are listed here, not in false difference, but in their levels. And the standard var button is checked. I'm going to change two to four, just arbitrarily to four. Then I click OK. Now this is the unrestricted var result, but this is not where we are going. We need to determine the appropriate lags to use. So we go to view, we click on lag structure, we select lag length criteria, and here I may decide to leave it at eight. I click OK. I'm using the AIC, so for consistency, I'm looking at the AIC, and the AIC has asterisk lag two. So I'm using lag two for this model. So whenever the information criterion puts an asterisk at a figure, that is the optimal lag chosen by that information criterion. So you may decide to use SC, you may decide to use HQ or AIC. It depends on your choice. But well, I'll be using AIC for this analysis. So step two is done. Optimal lag is two. Step three, perform Johansson test. To do that, we go to quick, group statistics, Johansson co-integration test. So now I'm going to list all the variables. There's something I need to tell you here. The variable you list first will be your target variable. That is the variable by which the normalization will be conducted upon. So be careful how you arrange, depending on what your hypothesis is or what your research is all about. So know that the variable you list first will be the target variable. So in this case, my target variable is PDI. I click OK. Now we are in the Johansson Contribution Test dialog box. By default, it views as indicated case 3. And case 3 is often the standard practice, so I'm not going to change that. And case 3 simply means this model will use an unrestricted constant that has no trend. That means the constant will be both in the consecration equation and it will also be in the VAR equation. But there will not be trend in the model. So I'm going to leave it at case 3. This is the standard practice. Unless you have a reason to include trend in your model, then you can choose option 4 or in a very, or in a very extreme case, you can choose option 5. Now coming to lag intervals, remember our optimal lag indicated by AIC is 2. So this stays the way it is. So make sure that you impute the optimal lags indicated by the information criterion you have chosen. That is what you put here. You don't put arbitrary lag in this place. You put the optimal lag in this place. So I click OK. So this is the result of our Johansson cointegration test. So how do you interpret all this? First thing you need to look at your series. They are well indicated, just the way you put them in into the Johansson cointegration model. And you have two results, the trace result up here and the result from the maximum eigenvalue. Remember, anywhere you see the axillary sign, it tells you something is happening. And in this case, it tells you that you are rejecting that null hypothesis. Everything listed here are the null hypothesis of the Johansson cointegration. Same thing for the eigenvalue uh, equation here. So whenever one of the hypothesis is asterisk, it tells you you are rejecting that null hypothesis. So now, because none is asterisk, that null hypothesis of no cointegration is rejected. It is also rejected for the maximum eigenvalue. And by the time you look below the table, you can see that the trace test indicates that we have one cointegrating equation. So also the max eigenvalue indicates one cointegrating equation. So this is how you can read the Johansson cointegration test and you interpret accordingly. At most one, you can see we cannot reject that null hypothesis. It is at 19.07. Likewise, at most two, we cannot reject that null hypothesis because it's also higher than 5% level. But overall, the test indicates we have one cointegrating equation and this is the evidence here. The non is asterisk, so we are rejecting that there is no cointegration in this model. Let's scroll down a bit. I need to show you the normalized cointegrating equation and how you can interpret it. So here we are. You can see here one cointegrating equation 
and this is a normalized co-integrating equation. I've already copied this out neatly to a PowerPoint slide, so I'm going to move away from here to the PowerPoint slide. So here you can see the result I showed you earlier from eViews. Students often make mistakes when they are interpreting the Johansson normal normalization results. You interpret the normalization results by reversing the signs. Like I told you before, because I put PDI as a first variable in the Jurassic co-integration uh, model, normalization took place on the PDI variable. So the coefficient of PC and GDP will be reversed during interpretation. Even though it shows as a negative sign here, when you are interpreting, you must interpret it as having a positive relationship with PDI. So that is how you read the Johansson uh, normalized co-integrating uh, equation. Just some few notes I wrote here. I said LPDI is positioned as a dependent variable. So by interpretation, you can say something like this. In the long run, LPC has a positive impact while log of GDP has a negative impact on PDI. On average, Ceteris Paribus. You have to use the Ceteris Paribus because these are just OLS estimates. And this also goes to tell us that the coefficients are statistically significant at the 1% level. How do we know that? We can easily see from the standard error that we can compute the t-statistics. How can you compute the t-statistics? You divide the coefficients by the respective t-statistics. And if you do that, for the LNPCE variable, you are going to obtain 7.23 t-statistics and 5.84 for GDP. These are clearly above 2. So this one indicates 1% significant level. So in conclusion, the null hypothesis of no cointegration is rejected against the alternative of a cointegrating relationship in the model. So again, when you are interpreting Johansson normalization, please reverse the signs. Don't read it exactly the way you see it. You have to reverse the signs. This one says PCE has a positive relationship with PDI and GDP now has a negative relationship with PDI. So to wrap up this uh, part one, remember the target variable is placed first. Determining the maximum length is an empirical issue that will depend on the structure of your data. If you have a monthly data or a quarterly data or a weekly data or a yearly data. So you cannot arbitrarily determine lags. If you do that and you put too many lags, you will lose degrees of freedom. Your coefficients may turn out to be statistically not significant and you may end up having multicollinearity. Again, if you have too few lags, it could lead to specification errors. So the only way out of that is to choose your optimal lags using any of these information criteria. After that, perform Johansson test, then estimate Vecken with the P-1 lags. Interpret your coefficients as Ceteris Paribus effects, then never forget to perform diagnostics. Please read up on these test books and so many out there I'm showing you on the screen. And you can also download journal articles to see how they went about their procedure. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Don't go away. I'll be right back with how you can go ahead to estimate the vacuum, interpret it, and also perform diagnostics.